The big debate last night in Pennsylvania. The Republican front runners for U.S. Senate squaring off for the first time on stage. Now, this race could potentially tip the balance of power in the upper chamber. And the focus last night was squarely on President Biden. The mandates didn't work. We now know that. But we've made Washington drunk with power. Over the last 18 months, under Joe Biden is unprecedented in American history. The Green New Deal garbage, corruption that's stuffed into these multi-trillion dollar bills are hurting our working families. Even de Democrats running for re-election are running away from the Biden administration. The border is an unmitigated disaster. That is, you know, it's, it's in line with a lot of other illogical things that the Biden administration and Democrats have forced upon uh, American people. Let's bring in former White House Deputy Chief of Staff Carl Rove and tell us about this race in Pennsylvania, especially just like how Im important it is for Republicans to try to keep the seat as Pat Toomey retires. Yeah, look, uh, this is a state that was won by Donald, uh, excuse me, but won by Donald Trump in 2016 and, and won by Joe Biden in 2020, so it flips back and forth. And it's going to be a close race in the fall, and the Republicans need to keep this seat if they're going to take uh, the majority. And we saw last night uh, the two front runners. It's sort of an east-west split. Uh, Mehmet Oz is stronger in the east. David McCormick is stronger in the west. Uh, and how uh, the middle of the state turns out is going to decide this race. Uh, Carl, meanwhile, there is a report in the Washington Post this week that got Dana and my attention here, talking about uh, President Biden fine-tuning his message ahead of the midterms. But here's the quote that sticks out from a Democrat. Here it is, guys. Call for two. There is as much a plan to win the midterms as there was to airlift Afghans out of Kabul. They're putting us all in a bad place. How's that going to work out in six months? Not good, not well. In fact, the, the article says no final comprehensive strategy, and we're less than 200 days away from the election. No clear plan for how they're going to involve the president and the vice president. No, most important of all, no set message. What's going to be the message for the fall? There's a, there are complaints about a bollocked up White House political decision making process. And earlier, we'd heard reports that the Democratic National Committee chairman, Jaime Harrison, uh, feels uh, disrespected and uninvolved by the White House political shop. So all of this is bad news uh, for the Democrats because you need to have, they're going to get whacked in the election. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. Uh, the question is, how bad is their loss going to be? And be, to be two, less than 200 days before the election and not have people out there saying, well, at least they've got a sense of how they want this thing to play out. Uh, that's bad for the Democrats. There's a new book that's coming out by, uh, from New York Times reporters Jonathan Martin and Alex Burns. Um, and one of the things that they pointed out was that inside the White House, there's a feeling about the squad that might not be shared publicly, but here it is in the book. Here's a quote from Counselor to the President Steve Reschetti. Problem with the left is they don't understand that they lost. Senior advisor Cedric Richmond said Representatives Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, Rashida Tlaib are the F-word idiots. And that's interesting to me, Carl, because in many ways, especially if you think about Build Back Better and that whole disaster of trying to, to pair up the infrastructure bill with the Build Back Better bill, trying to defer to the left, the, left, the, the progressive squad, like they were on the team. They were on message, and they were trying to help push that across the finish line, even when it looked like it wasn't going to happen when Joe Manchin said no. But now the squad knows what they really think about them in the West Wing. Yeah, well, and this, this, this Cedric Richmond is now leaving. I don't know if this is cause and effect. I don't think so. But, but, but look, I think they are reassured by, the, by what they hear out of the chief aide in the West Wing, namely Ron Klain, who has been quoted time and time and time again as sending mm -hmm. reassuring notices to the progressives. But look, that's a sideshow. The, the, the main part of the article that Democrats ought to worry about is 200, less than 200 days before the election, and they don't know what they're doing. And here's the emerging Democratic message that we can see play out. They, they, they talk about this in the story, but we also see it in the president's appearances around the country. Jobs and results, that, you know, and they're going to make a laundry list of results. But the, and, and we're going to avoid cultural issues, except we're going to say we're not in favor of defunding the police. But they haven't settled the question of what they're going to do about Trump, and they haven't settled what they're going to do about all these progressive demands like the ones that we saw last Sunday in a New York Times op-ed from Elizabeth Warren and that we hear constantly from the squad 
But most important of all, this strategy ignores the fact that the number one issue in the election this fall is going to be Biden's inflation. When he came into office, prices were rising at 1.4 percent. In March, year over year, they were up 8.5 percent year over year. That's what the American people are concerned about. And saying, you got a job, ignores the fact that while they may have a job, that job's pay is not keeping up with inflation, and prices are going rising faster than families can keep up. And, and the Democrats have no idea how to solve that. They're going to blame maybe it on Putin, and they're going to blame it on big corporations. Yeah. But people know it is the government spending that they put into place last year with the, with the American Rescue Plan, which turns out to be the American Inflation Plan. I'm sorry, Carl, quickly. Whose job is that? You worked in the White House. Is that Biden's job? Is that Klain's job? Is well, it's the, the job, of, it's the the job of the White House process, and it starts with the president. It, it, it has to involve the chief of staff, and it has to be operationalized and executed by the political shop so that all the stakeholders, the party chairman, the Biden operation, the, the political elements inside the Democratic Party, they're all singing off the same sheet of music. And clearly this starts with the president not being able to articulate a message and, and the top leadership in the White House, starting with the chief of staff, not being able to get everybody corralled and get it done, and the political shop for not being able to then hold hands and make everybody feel good about it. It's, it's, it's a mess, as, uh, as Zach Galifianakis yeah. would say in the movie The Candidate. <laughs> <laughs> good good to see you, Carl. Thank you. Thank you, Carl. You nice bet. to see you in Austin.